good everyone i hope you guys have an amazing day so what i'm going to do today i'll talk about uh something about the user training and enablement so obviously user training is very important right because when you implement a software it doesn't matter salesforce or sap or or netsuite or whatever right you need to have users who you need to train your users and that's very important uh, now from a salesforce perspective right if you implement a functionality let's say um an insurance functionality right uh on the salesforce you obviously want the users to get trained on how to use the functionality now if you are a sysadmin right you have bigger responsibility than just implementing some of the core functionality you need to uh work out um onboarding experience of the user so onboarding experience of the user how does the day one look like right how do you encourage user to you know onboard What's the step involved and the documentation that goes with it, right? So the, the number one thing is, right, obviously, user has to log in, right? So they, each one needs their own um, username and MFA uh, options because, obviously, you know, MFA needs to be enabled for the security reason. So you need to train how to use that. Some of the users have no clue what MFA is all about, right? Multi-factor authentication. Uh, you need to write down all the steps because obviously, you know, even if you're admin, you know something, that's fine. But what if you're away that day, right? Someone has to, and let's say it's, it's a day one uh, of going live. The user needs to log in. So if you're, if, you're, if you're off sick, then someone needs to go through the documentation to, you know, help the user to get onboarded. So uh, there are a lot of things that goes behind the scene with the user uh, engagement and enablement. Though it looks quite simple, but it's not really the case, right? I personally have done, but I uh, initially, right, when I was pretty younger, when I was two, I used to give training uh, on different systems, ERP systems, not Salesforce. I was not using Salesforce a long time ago. Um, so I used to, you know, I used to build functionalities and I, I was a developer, right? So my main role is to build the functionality and the training user. It was a small shop. I used to work small. IT shop, I mean. Um, so the, the way I used to do, right, I used to document everything, right? You know, I deploy the code and everything is, is working fine. And and then the one I normally used to do, right, I, I write down everything uh, in, a, in a Word document because that time we were not using Confluent page. Uh, so I used to write down everything in a Word document and then uh, and then you know send it to say a super user right or an admin to say hey if this makes sense and if this makes sense okay let me give you the training so i try to give the training and then the super user of always step in and say hey can we simplify this way can we simplify that way so documentation is very important from a user enablement perspective and also it can be used as a training document right i get it uh developer uh, may not be a great choice when it comes to writing training manuals but it's a good start right someone has to start it and perhaps a user you a super user or a functional consultant can step in and you know improve the document right so it's it's an ongoing process so the, the having a user training material in place um is very important now one thing i want to mention right let's say from a salesforce perspective if you're um if you're implementing the sales cloud, then obviously user needs to train, right? How to convert the leads to account and opportunity, or at sometimes, uh, you know, you don't really have to convert to an opportunity. So different scenarios need to be taught to the users, and that should be part of the training process, right? It shouldn't be the case that, oh, you just show them the happy scenario. Then, and also you need to tell them what happens when something needs to be escalated, right? How do you do that? Whom to contact? All of these are part of the training process, user enablement. And some users might even say, hey, can I use my phone to log in from the home? So that option is you need to consider as well, right? And also you need to have a training goal in place, right? Because obviously you cannot train everyone in a day. It might take a week, sometimes it might take a month. So you need to have a training program in, a play, in place, sometimes a kind of a... Uh, an exercise they have to perform or some or even uh, you might even say hey it's too much of um, you know project risk we can't let the user uh, start using on the day one we need 
them to be trained on a UAT or on a QA. So so you can build that program pre pre advance before the things can go live, and they can play with it. They can try ask as many questions they want, and perhaps a super user can take responsibility to train other users. So uh, it just goes as a part of a train a training pattern, right? Whatever works for the business. And just wanted to say that not everything works the same for every business because some companies have different way of training. Some companies might have. They recommend you to um, bring in, say, you know, some consultant to help, you know, to give you a live session, or sometimes they give you the training manual to, you know, go through it and practice by yourself. And and it's also an opportunity, to, you know, to improve the documentation. So yeah, that's that's a pretty simple thing I wanted to talk about. It's not much, I, I get it, but it's an important topic, right? Because most of the time, you know, the user trainings people get it wrong. And it really leads to a lot of confusions, a lot of errors, because users don't know what they're doing. They always get confused. They do wrong information entry. So it's, it also leads to a data integrity problem. So yeah, and at times it could be a governance issue, right? Because what happens, right, if you uh, enter, say, a user um, bank account number in a field which is not supposed to be? Uh, visible, right? So th those kind of things can cause a challenge. So user needs to be trained. That's why user enablement is very important. Also, sometimes the users are not very tech savvy. Um, they just want to perform their task. They're, they're not really wanting to know the nitty gritty aspect of the software. So uh, it's very important to make sure that what the user sees what, because not every information is supposed to be viewed by every user, right? So you have to pay uh, those things into consideration as well. So that being said, I hope you guys have an amazing um, Wednesday. Adios.